ito, ang gagawin natin is hahanapin natin yung asymptotes ng isang rational function. Ito sa board na nakikita nyo, ito yung isang example ng graph ng isang rational function na f of x is equal to 2x squared all over x squared minus 1. Now, mapapansin nyo sa graph ng function natin ito, meron tayong vertical at saka horizontal um, asymptotes na tinatawag. Itong x equals negative 1 at x equal to 1, which is a vertical line dito sa ating axis, yung tinatawag nating vertical asymptote. At ito namang linya na ito, na y equals 2, yung tinatawag nating horizontal asymptote ng rational function na f of x equals 2x squared all over x squared minus 1. Now, isa sa mga basic skills na kailangan yung matutunan sa pag-graph ng rational function is yung paghanap ng ating mga asymptotes na tinatawag. At sa rational function, kalimitan, meron tayong mga horizontal at vertical asymptotes na kailangang i-graph bago natin makuha yung behavior ng ating rational function. At yan yung aaralin natin today. Paano hanapin yung vertical asymptote at saka yung horizontal asymptote ng isang rational function? Dito sa ating unang example, kailangan nating hanapin yung asymptote ng mga rational functions sa example. At dito sa unang dalawang functions na, pag, na gagamitin natin, ang hahanapin muna natin is yung vertical asymptote. Now, yung first function natin is f of x equal to 2x squared all over x squared minus 1. Now, ang goal natin is mahanap yung vertical asymptote nitong rational function na ito. So, hindi muna natin i-graph yung rational function, ngunit ang gagawin natin ngayon is kung paano hanapin yung vertical asymptote na tinatawag. At since sinasabi dito na vertical asymptote, ibig sabihin yung vertical line yung hahanapin natin na magsisilbing wall doon sa ating rational function na kung saan hindi pwedeng mag-pass through doon yung graph ng ating rational function. Now, paano bang pagkuha ng vertical asymptote sa isang rational function? Ang una nating step na gagawin is kukunin yung denominator ng ating rational function and we, else, we are setting it to zero so we can solve for x. So, yun yung ating unang step. So, ang ating denominator sa equation number 1 is x squared minus 1. So, kukunin natin si x squared minus 1 at I-disregard muna natin yung numerator. So, hindi muna natin sa siya kakailanganin. So, ito yung ating x squared minus 1. And what you need to do is to solve for x or yung x value nitong ating equation na ito. x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. Now, by factoring method, alam natin na makukuha natin yung solution ng ating quadratic function. At ang factor ng x squared minus 1 is x plus 1 at x minus 1, which is equal to 0. And by the zero product property, is the set natin yung dalawang parentheses into 0 para mahanap natin yung dalawang values ng x. At dito nga sa ating denominator, yung mga values ng x natin will be x equals negative 1 and x equal to 1, which is hindi naman... Um, or walang pinagkaiba doon sa pagkuha ng domain ng ating rational function. Now, since ito yung ating x values, which is negative 1 and positive 1, ito ngayon yung vertical asymptote na tinatawag doon sa ating rational function na f of x. So, kapag kaginraph nyo yung ating line, which is x equal to negative 1 and x equal to 1, yan yung vertical asymptote nitong ating first rational function. So, yan muna yung gagawin natin for today. Hahanapin muna natin yung asymptote ng mga rational function. At ito yung dalawang asymptote or vertical asymptote ng ating function na 2x squared all over x squared minus 1 gamit yung denominator ng rational function. So sa example number 2, meron akong x squared plus x minus 2 all over x squared minus x minus 8, excuse me, minus 6. So once again, kakalimutan muna natin yung numerator and we're going to focus on our denominator. And we need to set our denominator to zero at tulad ng ginagawa natin kanina, you need to solve for the values of x or yung solution ng ating quadratic function. So meron tayong quadratic function dito at sa pag-solve ng quadratic function, pwede tayong mag-factor, pwede tayong mag-complete the square, pwede rin tayong gumamit ng quadratic formula. At dito sa method na gagawin ko, yung factoring method. Kasi alam ko na ang factor ng x squared minus x minus 6 is x plus 2 
and x minus 3 is equal to 0. And by the zero product property, yung two values of x ko dun sa denominator will be x equal to negative 2 and x equal to 3. At ito ngayon yung ating vertical asymptotes. So isa yung x equal to negative 2 at yung isa is x equal to 3. Kasi andito si x equal to negative 2 and x equal to positive 3. So magdodraw lang kayo ng vertical line. So meron na or nakuha na natin yung vertical asymptote ng ating rational function. So sa pagkuha naman ng horizontal asymptote, ito naman ay may uh, ibang step kumpara doon sa pagkuha ng vertical asymptote. Now, ito yung ating rational function na tinatawag which is a polynomial in fraction form. So meron tayong polynomial sa taas at meron tayong polynomial sa baba or n of x all over d of x. Now, ito yung isa pa sa mga paraan ng pagsulat ng ating rational function. We have a coefficient of a, a sub n and yung ating x raised to the exponent of n plus any number or terms right here and the constant all over yung ating polynomial once again which is b of m times yung ating x to the raised to the m which is yung ating variable plus up until a constant. Now sa pag kuha ng horizontal asymptote ng isang rational function, kailangan nyo lang tandaan itong tatlong conditions na ito. So, ang una nyo tatandaan is titignan nyo lang yung pinakamataas na exponent ng numerator at ng denominator. Kasi, doon madedetermine kung ano yung ating horizontal asymptote sa isang rational function. Yung unang, unang condition is yung exponent ba ng Numerator ay mas mataas sa exponent ng denominator at kung nangyari yan, ang ating horizontal asymptote ay hindi nag -e exist So, ibig sabihin, walang horizontal asymptote kung ang exponent ng numerator ay mas malaki sa exponent ng denominator. At yung pangalawang condition naman is kung mas kung yung ating numerator or exponent ng numerator ay mas maliit doon sa exponent ng ating denominator, ngayon yung ating horizontal asymptote will be at y equal to 0. At yung pangatlong condition, kung ang ating numerator or yung exponent ng numerator ay katumbas or parehas lang ng exponent ng denominator, therefore yung ating horizontal asymptote will be y equal to the coefficient ng ating pinakamataas na exponent all over dun sa coefficient ng ating denominator na may mataas na exponent din. So, ito yung tatlong conditions na ating kailangang tandaan. So, medyo vague pa siya kasi ito yung ating formula na tinatawag. Once meron na tayong examples at in-apply na natin itong mga conditions na ito, madali na lang yung pagkuha ng ating horizontal asymptote ng isang rational function. So, once again, titingnan nyo lang yung exponent or pinakamataas na exponent ng numerator at pinakamataas na exponent ng denominator para makita natin kung yung horizontal asymptote natin is condition A, B, or C. At ito yung ating mga examples ng ating mga rational functions. So, meron akong letter A, which is 4x squared all over 2x squared plus 1. Now, once again, sa paghanap ng horizontal asymptote ng ating rational function, kailangan nyo lang tingnan yung um, exponent ng no ating numerator at ng ating denominator. Now, ang highest exponent ng ating numerator ay parehas lang ng highest exponent ng ating denominator. Therefore, ito yung nagsasatisfy sa condition number 3. So, ibig sabihin, kapag magkapareho yung exponent, yung horizontal asymptote natin will lie at y equal to the coefficient ng highest exponent sa taas at saka sa baba. So, 4 over 2, 4 over 2, which is 2. That means yung ating horizontal asymptote is at y equal to positive 2. So, yan yung ating horizontal asymptote. Kaya siya tinawag na horizontal asymptote kasi meron tayong horizontal line. So, ito yung condition number 3 na nagsatisfy sa problem letter A. Now, so problem letter B, I have 3x times x plus 1 all over 2x. Now, kung mapapansin nyo, map maiisipin nyo na ito ay under condition number three na, pa, na parehas lang yung exponent pero kapag dinistribute natin si 3x dun sa ating x plus 1 alam natin na ito ay magkakaroon ng 3x squared plus 3x so therefore yung ating highest exponent ngayon na nasa taas 
yung n will be 3 at yung highest exponent ng ating bottom will be 1. So, therefore, yung exponent ng taas is mas malaki sa exponent nung nasa baba. At ang condition na ito ay nag apply dun sa ating condition number 1. So, ibig sabihin nun, walang horizontal asymptote itong ating rational function na letter B. So, ito yung ating xy plane at mapapansin nyo, wala tayong linya or red line dun sa ating second rational function dahil yung condition niya is under condition number 1. So, yan yung asymptote na hindi nag exist doon sa rational function letter B. At sa, sa example number C, yung ating rational function is 8x squared all over 4x cubed plus 2x squared minus 1. At once again, titingnan nyo lang yung highest exponent ng top and highest exponent ng bottom. At mapapansin nyo yung top, we have square, which is yung highest exponent ng numerator. At ang highest exponent naman nung nasa baba is cube. So that means, ito yung condition number 2 na kung saan yung ating exponent sa taas is mas maliit sa exponent sa baba. So ibig sabihin nun, yung ating horizontal asymptote ay makikita or nasa y equal to 0. So, ibig sabihin, itong horizontal or yung ating rational function na ito, yung ating horizontal asymptote is nandito lang sa ating y or y equal to 0 o yung mismong horizontal line ng ating axis. So, yan yung pagkuha ng vertical asymptote and horizontal asymptote ng isang rational function base sa una, pag-set ng denominator to 0 para makuha yung vertical asymptote. At yung pangalawa, pag-satisfy ng tatlong conditions para mahanap yung ating horizontal asymptotes.